He's got the hospitality blues. Back about a couple of months ago, I had a little touch of lumbago, and I called my doctor to see what he'd suggest. Well, he said, man, it's plain to see the hospital's where you ought to be. What you need is good old-fashioned rest. The woman did admit she said I was late. She turned around, said, have a seat and wait, and that's what I did for two hours and a half. Now this making you wait, they got perfected. I got the feeling I was being neglected till this man came up and said something about private or staff. From the questions he asked in our interview, I figured he had sent by the revenue, and if I couldn't have talked, I don't reckon they'd have let me in. When he found out about my financial affairs, a nurse came in and took me upstairs and gave me a bed and a ward with two other men. She gave me this hospital gown to put on. I figured she must not have thought I was grown. The thing is so short, I had to leave on my pants. When those other two men said what they had, the chances of getting any rest was bad. One had consumption, the other St. Vitus dance. Just about time I got settled in bed, this boy in white walked in and said, I'm Dr. Smith and I gotta run some blood tests. I said, wait a minute, there's some mistake. My blood's all right, I got a backache. We had a big argument and I came out second best. After he'd taken all the blood I could spare, he got a sheet of paper and he pulled up a chair and he said, what brought you here? I said, my 35 Ford. He asked me a million questions or more about all the sickness I'd had before and every question I asked him, he just ignored. Ain't Susie died of drops, but I don't know what that's got to do with my lumbago. And the questions he asked about my private life made me mad. When he finally got off that talking jag, he pulled out a little black doctor's bag and gave me the awfulest physical I ever had. Well, he beat me with a hammer and tickled my feet and did some things I better not repeat. About the time he finished, another boy in white walked in. I found that he was an intern there. I want you to know he pulled up a chair and we went through the whole doggone thing again. Well, the next four hours after his exam, I got a brain wave and a cardiogram, an x-ray of every bone in my body, I reckon. When they fixed my tray, they thought I was on a diet that wasn't enough to keep a small bird quiet. It's made to taste so you wouldn't ask for seconds. As if I hadn't seen enough action, the doctor came back and put me in traction. The weights were so heavy, they pulled me out of bed three times. By then, my back was really hurt, and when they put me on the board, I knew for certain their definition of rest was different from mine. Well, they left the room, and I was dozing off when the man with consumption started to cough, and the other fella started having some sort of a chill. Well, they finally got quite a dozed off again. A little while, the nurse is back in. She woke me up just to give me a sleeping pill. When I came to, I thought I was in a tomb that's taking me to the operating room. I figured if I didn't talk, my goose was cooked. Well, it took me quite a bit of yelling and cussing to make them realize they had the wrong person. I was fighting to get my arms and legs unhooked. When I jumped up from there, I must have looked cute running down the hall in my birthday suit, but I wasn't worried about my dress not being formal. I got to my room and put my clothes on without a goodbye. I headed for home, and after two months, I still ain't back to normal. Now, if it offers any sort of consolation, if you're half dead or need an operation, then go ahead, man. You got nothing to lose. But if just a little rest is all you need, then if you go there, it's guaranteed you'll get the hospitality blues. Thank you. 
Thank you.